Welcome to the presentation from Brock University Faculty of Graduate Studies for the Banyer Scholarship. This presentation is recorded in September of 2022. In this presentation, I will discuss the program overview, eligibility criteria, and the application overview. Before beginning your application, we strongly encourage you to review the application's instructions available on the Tri-Agency website and use this video as a tool to guide you with that. The most up-to-date information will be on the Vanier website. For the Vanier Canadian Graduate Studies, the Tri-Agency manages the awards. This is comprised of CAHR, NSERC, and SHRC. And the agency that you would apply to would depend on the type of research that you're doing. The value of this award is $50,000 for three years, and you would complete your application through the Agency on Research Net, or the Research Portal, and you notify us at Graduate Studies that you will be applying. For that, you can email aflynn at brocku.ca. You will also have to complete the CCV, especially for specifically for the Vanier, and you will have your references submit through the uh, portal. Some important information about it is the deadline is October 1st, and there are absolutely no extensions to the date or time as this is managed by the Tri Agency. So this includes that there will not be an extension if you do not get your updated transcript in time or if your referees do not submit in time. So make sure that you start acting on those items well in advance. It's the sort of thing that you could even do now, the moment that you finish this meeting uh, or this recording or pause this recording and order your transcripts. There, um, again, is no flexibility. So the other thing to do is when you ask your referees, explain that to them and ask them to do it well in advance of October 1st. For the applications that will come in in 2022 for next year, we have the allocations of one award for SHRC and one award for NSERC. We do not have any quota for uh, CIHR. What this means is that these are the applications that we can put forth. So we can only put forth one award to the external adjudication. For to be eligible for the award, students must be registered to uh, or have applied for admission to the eligible graduate program and the award announcement will be in April. So moving on to additional eligibility criteria, you must be a Canadian citizen, permanent resident or foreign citizen. You have to be nominated by only one institution and this has to be received for your first doctoral degree. You need to have a first class average of 80% in each of the last two years of study uh, for the full time equivalent. And there's a certain time window within your program. And I will show you the website where to confirm that information. You may also not have held a CGSD. And if you have received a CGSM, you must be done that before receiving the Vanier Award. This website has all of those details on the eligibility. Make sure that before you begin your application, you really review your requirements and that you meet them. The biggest one is going to be the number of months of study. So uh, there are different windows depending on the um, type of student that you are. For example, if you transferred from a master's in or transferred in from a BA, and I'm not going to outline them here because I wanted the most up-to-date information to be on their website. So the evaluation criteria for the Vanier is really looking at sort of positioning students to be future professors and future researchers. 
So this evaluation criteria is used to assess your application from both our internal adjudication and if it's chosen to move forward, the external adjudication committee. Your application will be assessed on academic excellence, research potential, and personal characteristics and interpersonal skills. Once you apply, I will process your application. This includes confirming your basic information, such as the number of months of study. I will also calculate your grades for each of the last two years. Once it's all set, I will submit it to our internal adjudicators. We'll then meet and discuss each application to determine which application to put forward and if there are suggested changes to it. It then goes to the external adjudication committee at the agency and the students and me are notified via the online portal. I want to make a quick point here about EDI early in this presentation because I want to ensure that if you're doing research with humans that this is taken into consideration. So even if you're doing work at the cellular level, at least mention why you're doing one type of cell. So for example, if you're looking at only cells from males or females, explain why you're doing that. Obviously, if you're working with human participants, then it's a much bigger consideration that you have to include and think about within your research proposal. So the difference between Vanier and the CGSD is the leadership component. So with for the Vanier application, you must complete a personal leadership statement and two leadership letters of reference. I have a short video on how to ask for a letter of reference. And within this, you want to demonstrate a varied set of leadership skills and show how you will take the work that you're doing or have done and apply it in the community. Brock has some resources that can help, such as the Student Life and Success Leadership Program. But I want you to know that it has to be more than just taking a course. Uh, for the students that have received Vanny in the last couple years, it's really putting into action this leadership skill and making the bridge between Brock and the community. Academic excellence is the next component. So this includes your grades, the awards and conference presentations. This will be captured in your CCV and your letters of reference. If you have special circumstances that you want to discuss, you can put that in the special circumstances form, which is optional, but that could include things as to maybe why you don't have as many publications as other colleagues would. This is also actually a really great thing to have your references talk about, that if you have fewer um, publications, but this is common for your field, then the referee can talk about how you've been demonstrating uh, your research and academic excellence if it isn't necessarily those publications and presentations. And the research potential is measured by a few things. So adjudicators are generally looking for if the project is your own and not a copy of your professors. They also want to see a big project with long-term impacts. So it's not mandatory to align with what the agency's current mandates are. But for example, if you can position yourself to the bigger goals of SHRC, then it will make for a stronger application. Adjudicators are also looking at how you are the best person to do this research and your knowledge translation plan. And this is reflected in your research contributions and your research potential, and obviously would also be explained by your research referees. This website here outlines all of the uh, application process on the research net. So the steps are copied and pasted from their website right here. Obviously, it's easier if you're doing this with a double screen where you can have one screen open, walk through each of these steps on their website, and then also have your actual application open. As with any of these applications, I don't recommend composing the uh, 
component within the portal do things like your um, research proposal, type that in Word or an offline program where you can then copy and paste it in. So the Vanier application package includes the research net application form, your CCV, your research contributions, your personal leadership statement, your special circumstances, which is optional, two leadership letters of reference, a research proposal, and project references, and your transcripts. For your transcript, you want to make sure that you are including your most up-to-date one. So if you're just starting at Brock and you don't have any grades on your transcript, you still need to include it. The next thing that you need to do is your Canadian Common CV. This is often a very frustrating task. It is not necessarily the most user-friendly website. It was many, many years ago when it was created, but uh, we have a different level of expectation now. Unfortunately, this is still commonly used. But on the Vanya website, there are full instructions on how to complete your CCB. And you can edit this as you go along, and then you'll have to upload it once uh, it's finally complete. So for your references, each application is required to have two academic and two leadership reference assessments. So these could be the same person, but ideally it's people, uh, it's different people. So for example, your supervisor and a committee member for your or previous professor that you've worked with for your academic. And then for your leadership, they're really looking for someone who uh, you've possibly volunteered or worked with and demonstrated those leadership skills. You can go to the website to learn more about selecting your references, and you can see the information that the referee will receive at this website. Again, I have a little video on how to ask your referee to be a reference for you, and it, in this case it would include sending them this second link here, which I'll link in the comments of the YouTube channel. You should choose your references very carefully. Their assessment can have a significant effect on your application. Reviewers look at these assessments closely and look for information about you and your accomplishments. If this is for a proposed project, your proposed supervisor is not likely going to be able to, if you have not worked with them, um, is not likely going to be able to provide you a strong enough reference. So uh, make sure that you find someone that has worked with you and has seen these sorts of skills in you. Also, as I said earlier, make sure to ask them early, make sure the ask for them is as easy as possible so that they don't have to try to navigate and find this website. Uh, you want to be doing most of the work for this sort of reference request, providing them all of the information that they need, that they just have to write the reference report for you. So you will invite the referees via email to complete the reference report for you. Um, there is a deadline within here, but again, I would encourage them to uh, complete that reference report well in advance of the actual deadline of October. So once you've completed all of the modules for your application, uh, then I want for you to go in and double and triple check that the things are in the right attachment locations. For example, do not have your CV where you should have your transcript. Also make sure that your transcript is complete. If there are multiple uh, educational institutions that you've been to, so for example, you went to Brock and previously to that you had gone to uh, Mohawk College, make sure that you have both transcripts in there. Make sure that you have all pages of your transcripts and that you have the legend with the transcript. 
and then I recommend that you save or print a copy of your application before you finally submit. Most applications come in the same day of the deadline. And uh, again, there is no extensions. So even if your computer restarts or something happens, uh, we cannot extend the deadline for this. So make sure that you do it well in advance of the actual deadline. It would be very painful to do all of this work, to have your four references, write your letters of reference and have it tied up by a technicality. So although again, we have the application deadline as of October 1st, I would even tell yourself that it's the day before so that if there are any technical issues, you have an extra day to do it. So we have some tips and suggestions to help you prepare a successful application. Be clear and concise in your proposal. You'll have very limited space to convey your message. You want to avoid jargon and remember who your audience is. In this case, it could be a subject matter expert. And then we try to have readers from outside of your field that are reading it because when it gets to the external adjudication committee, it will be uh, people from out, it could be people from outside of your discipline that are reading it. So you want to make sure that all of your information is presented in very plain language. We have a video on there uh, on our YouTube channel and on our SharePoint page outlining how to do this. You also want to avoid repetition. Avoid mentioning the same idea in multiple sections. You want to check your spelling and grammar. Have someone read your writing prior to submitting. Ask them to be critical and provide suggestions where necessary. This is one of those cases where I encourage you to have someone very outside of your field read this. This is a great thing for your parents or uh, friends to read. I also want you to be not shy about your accomplishments and achievements. You want to make your applications stand out and make the adjudicators understand that you really are the best person to do this research. Order your transcripts as soon as possible. For if you're a current Brock student, we now have the online portal where you can uh, order your transcripts. You also want to reach out to your referees now, even if your application is not ready, um, and keep in touch with them during the process. As I highly recommend, you send them a copy of your application, even if it is in very rough form. I really like using something like OneDrive or SharePoint where you can share with them an active link to a file and they can like tune in and sort of see where your file is at the time. But you don't want to wait to invite them or ask them to be your reference until the last day. We had that last year and I assure you that the letter of reference that the professor turned out within an hour was of a less quality than a professor who had been asked a month or two in advance. I also want you to check out our resources. So you'll be spending a lot of time on our external website where we have a little bit of information. And then we have our SharePoint site, which is only for graduate students, where I have videos similar to this one. Thank you and good luck in your application.